Nasser's reputation was particularly damaged by the Yemen Civil War of September 1962, which pit Egypt against Saudi Arabia and the U.S. I lived in Saudi Arabia at the time, although I was just an infant. But my father was preparing to go and get on a plane to travel to Yemen to see if he could open a branch of Citibank there. He had to cancel his trip because the imam of Yemen, the ruler, was overthrown by young army officers. Young colonels rose up to overthrow the Zaidi imam that ruled Yemen. The Zaydis are the same as the Houthis today that are fighting so bitterly against Saudi Arabia. 40,000 Egyptian troops were committed over the next several years to helping Colonel Abdullah al-Salal, the leader of the North Yemeni revolution. Saudi Arabia backed the crown prince of Yemen, the Imam, and the tribesmen in the countryside that supported him. In many ways, the civil war pitted the city folk behind the Republicans versus the country folk behind the Imam. President Kennedy, jumping onto the Saudi side, sent warplanes to King Faisal of Saudi Arabia. Now, Kennedy, who had been elected in 1960, moved closer to both Israel and Saudi Arabia during his years in power. This was a result of the formation of the UAR and the rise of Nasser. But he also reached out to Nasser in an effort to draw him away from the USSR and the communists. Kennedy treated Israel like Britain in what he called a special relationship. He had, after all, depended on the Jewish vote for his narrow electoral victory over Nixon. He sent Hawk anti-aircraft missiles, jet airplanes, and other arms to Israel. This was, in many ways, the United States entering into what became an ever more brisk arms race against the Soviet Union. The CIA forged close ties to Mossad, the Israeli secret police. But at the same time, Kennedy began to try to improve relations with the Arab neutralist camp. That means Nasser. He sent wheat to Egypt and foreign aid. But this aid quickly went into decline as Nasser got involved in Yemen in 1962. But it was the 1967 war that was Nasser's ultimate undoing. The defeat of the combined Egyptian, Jordanian, and Syrian armies in just six days by Israel was a catastrophe for Arab nationalism. Nasser resigned in shame following the defeat, but widespread pro nasserist demonstrations led him to continue in his rule. He died in 1970 of a heart attack. Some said he had died of a broken heart. From 1967 onward, pan-Islamism began to emerge as the opposition force to pan-Arabism. The Muslim Brotherhood and eventually Al-Qaeda would emerge from this movement. Both regard secular nationalism as an evil. But throughout the 1950s and 60s, Arabism was the ascendant ideology of the Middle East. It was copied from one end of the Arab world to the other. 